Oh, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillum. I'm an itinerant evangelist who believes in expositional preaching. I like to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form. I like to do it with enthusiasm. It's a joy to have you here today on these YouTube broadcasts. Hope you'll have a Bible handy, a notebook, something to write with. You'll find our text today in the book of Nehemiah and uh, chapter number 9. Uh, for some time, we've been looking at the life of Nehemiah as he left Babylonian captivity and returned to Jerusalem to build a hedge, uh, an earthly hedge, around this city. While building this earthly hedge, uh, time and time again he prayed and built an eternal hedge around the people there in that city. And so we've been looking at Nehemiah's prayers with this for us, this emphasis. I can only fuel my passion for Christ. When I speak of passion, I speak of drawing closer to him. Uh, panting, pressing towards him, getting as close as possible. I can only fuel my passion for Christ by making prayer a priority in my life. And uh, that has been our emphasis. We have looked uh, at the prayer for an audience with God in chapter 1, a prayer for the authority of God in chapter 2, Chapter 4, prayer for the attention from God. And in also in chapter 4, we looked at a prayer to be armed by God. The last couple of broadcasts, we've been looking at a prayer of adoration unto God. If God has given us an audience, uh, he's given us authority, he's given us attention, He's armed us. The least we can do is adore him. And we looked already at an adoration in Nehemiah chapter 9 for who he is. In our last broadcast, we looked at an amazement for what he has done. Now today, I turn our attention to Nehemiah chapter number 9 and verse 26 at the abasement for what we have done. Uh, there has been a failure to make prayer a priority in, in these people's lives, and because of that, God abases thee. Notice, if you would, in verse 26, the action that needs abasement. He said, nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs. After all that God has done for them, what they've seen prayer accomplish, they put the law in the rearview mirror and did as they pleased. That demands from God an abasement in our life. But I see also in our text, there is an additional thing that causes abasement. He said in verse number 28, but after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Latter part of verse 28, he says, and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercies. God continued to have mercy. It sounds like a testimony of our own country, our own nation. We put the law of God in the rear view mirror. We put God in the rear view mirror. And uh, although he's been so merciful to us and given us rest, he says in verse 29, and testifies against them that thou mightest uh, bring them again unto thy law. I'm telling you, God is testifying against us in this hour. We have not made prayer a priority. God has not been the center focus. We have not made a, pri a priority of fueling our passion for Christ with prayer. There is the actions that need abasement. 
There is the additional things that are causing abasement. It is my prayer today, oh Lord, let me make prayer a priority. Lest I fall into a state of needing to be abased. I can say with the songwriter today, I am prone to wonder. I am prone to leave the God I love. Lord, teach me to pray. Teach me to make prayer a priority like you did in your own life. I see not only in our text, there is the actions that need abasement. There is the additional things causing abasement. But notice there is the allurements into abasement. God begins to allure them into abasement. He says in chapter 9 and verse number 27, When they cried unto thee, thou heardest thee. God's brought them low. How come? So they would cry unto him. And he says there, he says in verse 27, Thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. Oh, I tell you today, deliverance for us personally, deliverance for us as a country is one cry of God's people away. Oh, may we unitedly today cry unto God that he would deliver us from a godless society. We see also the allurements in verse 30. Yet many years didst thou forbear them. God's long-suffering, he's long-fused, he's patient with us. That is alluring us back, but many, they, they use that as putting God further behind them. Verse 31, he says, Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them. All oh, the mercies of God, so most often prayed prayer in the Bible, and it's only denied once by the rich man in hell. Even the demons that wanted to go into the pigs, God had mercy upon their desire and request. In verse number 32, he says, Now therefore our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keep us covenant. Oh, may we see today who he is. He is alluring us by his own actions to make prayer a priority. In verse 33, he said, How be it thou art just in all that is brought upon us. These people begin to confess. They begin to humble themselves before an almighty God. He says in verse 36, Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto their fathers, to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are thy servants. There's a spirit of contrition. Oh, that's what we need. If we're going to make prayer a priority, we must humble ourselves. We must come contritely before him. Verse 37, And it yielded much increase unto the king, whom thou hast set over us because of our sin. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle, and at their pleasure, we are in great distress. It has left them in great distress, and because of that, they're crying out to God for mercy. There is in this prayer an abasement for what we have done. I notice, last of all, there is an agreement upon what we must do. I notice in chapter number 9 and verse number 5 that he is worthy of double thanks. The Bible said in verse number 5, the latter part, it said they stood up and blessed the Lord their God forever and ever. Blessed be thy glorious name which is exalted above all. Blessings and praise. Blessings means to kneel or to bow. Praise means to celebrate with loud words of hallelujah. They're giving him double, worthy, double thanks. Oh, I tell you today, in our prayers, if there's ever been a day when he's worthy of double thanks, 
it is this day. May we agree as God's people on what we must do. We must give him double thanks. I notice not only is he worthy of double thanks, but I notice in chapter 9 and verse number 38, there is the writing of declaring threats, uh, de uh, writing of disclosing treats. Uh, if you've got the scriptures there, chapter 9, verse 38, and because of all of this, because God has brought them low, he says this we make a sure covenant and write it in our princes, Levites, and priests, uh, seal unto it. Because of all that has happened, we make a sure covenant, a seal of prayer, that we're going to make prayer a priority in our life. Oh, I tell you, there needs to be a writing today in our own hearts of declaring in our own hearts that we're going to make prayer a priority in our life. Chapter number 10 and verse 29, I notice not only is there a worthy of double thanks. There is a writing of declaring uh, uh, their uh, their treats that they are going to treat God in a in the way that He needs to be treated in a giving Him priority. But there is the walk in demonstrating truth. The Bible says in verse twenty nine, and they clave to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law. Oh, may we walk with him. May we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Uh, may we uh, make prayer a priority today. I tell you, as we look at our nation today, oh, our nation is in shambles. Uh, all over our nation, there's a wickedness on the rampage internationally. What are we to do? Oh, I tell you, the only thing we can do to put a hedge about our nation is to make prayer a priority in our lives. And one of the great uh, instruments of prayer that all prayer should begin with is to give him praise. I'm reminded of the old Christmas carol and the, the little course that says this, Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. May we this day make prayer a priority and come and let us adore him. Well, it's been a joy to have you on the broadcast again today. Remind you of our study website, TomGillum.com. We have there uh, hundreds of Bible studies, have a daily devotional there, hook up to these YouTube broadcasts, have an audio section there. All of that material is free. Come there and study with us, TomGillum.com. You have a prayer request, something you can help us pray about. You're interested in a meeting. I'm an itinerant evangelist. Have some open dates for next year, 2015. If you want to email me, tbgillum at aol.com. Thanks for listening to the broadcast.